Daddy, look, butterfly. ADHD was a very hot um, diagnosis. ADHD, basically, there's three different types. Depression looks like ADD. Parents really go through a hard time with working with ADHD kids. Neglect looks like ADD. People are having trouble focusing on things. They get distracted by sound or, or things that they see. They need to have a great deal of respect for the doctor who prescribes the medication. How that's handled could affect their self-confidence. My name is uh, Dr. Mary Travis, and I was originally a classroom teacher. And then I went to UCF and became a school psychologist and worked in the school system for a little bit. Then I went to get my uh, PhD, and I got that in human and organizational development. My name is James West. I'm a licensed mental health counselor, nationally certified counselor. And I received my master's degree from Liberty University and uh, also took classes from Uni University of South Florida. And I specialize in ADHD and oppositional defiance disorder. Uh, defining ADHD in layman's terms, probably the best thing you can say is that you know it when you see it. Uh, it's a combination of things. One is hyperactivity where they have real trouble sitting down in a traditional classroom setting or, or structured environments. Those are the kids that can't sit down, can't sit still. There's the, the inattentive type where people are having trouble focusing on things, they get distracted by sound or, or things that they see. Those are the kids who just sort of, you know, drift away and they think about other things. And then there's the third subtype where they have trouble, or they have both, where they can't focus and they're overactive. Impulsivity, that goes with the blurting out and, uh, and saying whatever comes to your mind, whenever. ADHD is a neurobiological disorder. They have done MRIs and brain scans that show that there is definitely less activity in the frontal, frontal lobe of the brain. It's usually a problem in the frontal lobe for the hyperactive kids. Where, where you do your thinking and decision making. It's lazy and they use stimulants to wake up the frontal lobe. Ritalin's a stimulant. Adderall. And uh, Stratera. Which is a time release medication. And one called Focalin. And then there's a patch called Daytrona that seems to be working pr fairly well without as many side effects as the others. And they are all little derivatives of um, methylphenidate. It's methylphenidate. It's just time released. And so the concern in the Adderall have become more popular because the kids don't have to go to the nurse for lunch at lunchtime to get medication so the kids don't get picked on as much. Also, a lot of the activity that you see in school, you know, this, that the teachers will complain about, moving around and, and not hearing the instructions and always asking somebody about stuff. The, these kids are 25 to 30 percent behind socially and emotionally, so they need uh, social skills, uh, whether it be in a group setting. We do camps, uh, leadership day camps, summer camps. Yeah. Um my name is Alan Davidson and I am a counselor with Total Life Counseling. Well, with Total Life Counseling, we actually do a lot on the ropes course. So we do uh, rock wall climbing, as you can see behind you. I would say probably the extreme cases that we have here of ADHD are probably, um, in a given week we'll have 20 kids and out of the 20, probably 50%. The kids that, that don't have the hyperactivity uh, signifier in their diagnosis. They, they do well here too. Usually when they get about halfway up the wall and they say, I'm going to quit, I can't do it, we usually keep them up there on the wall for another two to three minutes just to get them to take some breaths and calm down and then continue on up the wall. The uh, critiques that we hear from the parents are actually really positive. And we see parents report that they you know, close the gap by one to two years socially and emotionally. Even when a kid 
doesn't do as well as, as they'd like. They, they still see some improvement. But in general, when I have someone come in and I'm going to diagnose them, we have, uh, I use the Connors scales for a checklist and the teachers, two teachers complete that. And the pediatrician sometimes might, might prescribe the medication without sending a checklist to the school. They need to have a great deal of respect for the doctor who prescribes the medication. But I think overall pediatricians are being more careful, especially since the FDA is telling everyone to be very cautious with with, with the medications and with the stimulants. ADHD was a very hot um, diagnosis. And uh, it's kind of being replaced now with um, Asperger's syndrome. The anxiety, depression. And uh, childhood bipolar. I think we're doing a really good job of, of catching that. It's probably coming into its, its proper place because it certainly was overdiagnosed. It was like everybody had it. And now more and more what you're hearing when people come in is, I, oh, I think he has Asperger's or something like that. So it, it's kind of, it's like kind of like mental health goes through fads and phases. Bada bing!